Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to check the Foxeer Aura 5 inch freestyle frame and the mini F722 V2 Pro flight controller. In this video I'm going to assemble the frame and go over its features and specs, point out a few differences between the new flight controller and the previous one and show you how to configure its new pit mode option. Let's start with the new Aura frame which was recently released along with the scissor frame which I have recently reviewed. In terms of packaging, everything comes well organized and inside this pretty big box, which I recommend to keep for storage purposes, you can find two 22 and 25 cm long high quality battery velcro straps that feature a grip pattern for the battery, four interchangeable carbon fiber arms, an anti-skid battery sticker, the bottom, middle, top and FPV camera side plates, all the needed screws, standoffs and nuts for assembling the frame, 3D printed TPU parts which include a bottom lip protector, motor protectors, an action camera mount and a back mount for an Immortal T antenna and for the FPV antenna and four motor wires protectors which is a really nice add-on. Now I'm going to quickly show you how to assemble the frame and I'll see you in a bit in order to check the results. Now, as you can see, the Foxeer rough frame is assembled. In terms of features and specs, the wheelbase of the frame is 220 mm and it features a wide X pattern. The thickness of each replaceable carbon fiber arm is 5.5 mm and its width is 11 mm. The thickness of the bottom plate is 3 mm and the thickness of the middle and top plates is 2 mm. The distance between the middle and top plates is 23 mm and the distance between the bottom and top plates is 30.4 mm. On the center of the bottom plate you can find both 20x20 20 20 and 30.5x30.5 mm M3 mounting holes for mounting your stack and on the back of the frame 20x20 20 20 mm mounting holes for mounting a VTX. By reversing the two FPV camera carbon fiber plates, you'll be able to mount the DJI digital camera, which is 20 mm wide, or a standard 19 mm micro sized FPV camera. The weight of the frame is 132.9 grams, not including the motor protectors, and 141.6 grams, including them, and the weight of the 3D printed action camera mount is 8.1 grams. So overall, as far as I can tell at the first glance, the Foxeer Aura frame looks like a good option for a freestyle 5-inch build as it features high-quality carbon fiber parts, it is well designed, reasonably priced and comes with plenty of useful accessories. I'm going to feature both Aura and Scissor frames soon on Build and Fly videos after I'm going to get some new parts from Foxeer including their new VTX and I would like to remind you that the giveaway for both frames is still open and in case you would like to learn more about it, check out my recent review of the Caesar racing frame. Moving on to the Mini F722 V2 Pro, a flight controller that was heavily tested by BMS, a professional Australian FPV drone racing champion. The Mini F722 V2 Pro is very similar to the F722 V2 and the main differences between these two flight controllers are that the Pro version is slightly bigger, it features a 5V 3A BAC versus 2A on the normal version, it features two pass-through ports, and the main difference is the pit mode option, which now I'm going to show you how to configure. First of all, it's important to mention that the pit mode option is going to turn off the VTX, and it's only going to work in case the VTX is going to be powered using 5V 
and specifically using the 5V pad, which is located next to the TX5 pad on the flight controller. In order to configure the pit mode option, connect the flight controller to your computer or mobile device, open up Betaflight, head over to the CLI tab, and enter the following commands. These commands are going to configure the PIN-IO box and set the auxiliary switch which is going to control the pit mode option. In this example, I've assigned auxiliary 2 to user 1 mode. It is indicated by the digit 1 since the count starts from 0, so for example, if you'd like to use auxiliary 1 instead, use 0, and so on. And after entering these commands, don't forget to type save and press enter in order for the settings to be saved. After initially configuring the pit mode options using the CLI tab, you'll be able to change the auxiliary channel which is assigned to user 1 using the mode section on Betaflight. In this example, auxiliary 2 is assigned to both user 1 and R modes, which means that as soon as the flight controller is going to be armed, the VTX is going to be turned on, and once it is going to be disarmed, the VTX is going to be turned off. Of course it's not mandatory, and you can assign whichever auxiliary switch you'd like to the user 1 mode, but in my opinion, using the arm switch is pretty convenient. There is one issue that I would like to briefly discuss, which applies to both flight controllers and many other electronic components. As you might have noticed, the prices really went up. Last year, the price of the Mini F722 V2 flight controller was $30, and currently it's about $47, which is a major price increase. The reason behind the price increase, which you probably saw all over, is the increasing prices of chips. The cost of the MCU itself last year was about $5, and currently it's $15, which is a major increase in its price. So that's why you can see that many electronic parts are now much more expensive than before. Hopefully the chip shortage issue is going to be resolved soon and the prices will go back to normal, but I can estimate that it might take a while before it's going to happen. Anyway, that's going to be it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and you find it useful. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comment section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notifications bell if you're not already subscribed. See you on my next videos and goodbye.